All right, so rigid motions are motions that are isometric transformations, which we learned about isometric transformations back in our first unit of our year. Um, these isometric transformations, remember to pre preserve distances, angle measures, and parallelism. Um, and so if I were to take a triangle, let's look at triangle BCD, and um, remember the three isometric transformations are translations, rotations, reflections. For this one, it looked like I translated it to get this triangle, and then I reflected it to get this triangle. Um, those That was a series of isometric transformations, and actually it maps this pre-image onto the image, and it makes these triangles congruent. Um, so we are going back to transformations to kind of connect everything together. Uh, figures are congruent if one figure can be mapped onto the other by one or more rigid motions. The three isometric transformations, remember, are reflections, translations, and rotations. So in level one, we identified which triangles were congruent, or which pairs of triangles were congruent. And I only picked out the ones that were congruent, because now we are going to identify the rigid motion that maps the first triangle onto the second tri triangle. Um, if you have a pair of triangles that are not congruent, then we cannot identify a transformation uh, an isometric transformation, sorry, that would map the one triangle onto the other because they're not congruent triangles. So this only works for congruent triangles. Congruent, congruent triangles um, can be mapped together using isometric transformations. So let's look at number 10. Um, so the isometric transformation to get this red triangle onto this blue triangle you can start with any vertice on the red triangle. I'm gonna start with Z. If I wanted to put Z onto Y, I would need to translate Z over to get on top of Y. So that would be a translation along the ray ZY. Now, if you did Y to R, yours would be a translation along the ray YR, or if you did T to X, Yours would be a translation um, along the ray TX, and all of those three things would mean the same thing to map the red triangle onto the blue triangle. So number 10 was a translation. Number 11. Now, it may help to actually mark what's going on in the figure. So I have A, B, and C, D uh, congruent, and B, C, and D, A congruent. So what would happen is I need A to map onto C. I also need um, D to map on to B over here. And then I would need this B and D to map onto each other. So it's not a reflection because if I took this green dot, it's not going to match onto the other green dot. It's going to map onto the yellow dot if I did a reflection. So instead, it's a rotation because I'm going to take this yellow dot. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees over here. The green dot, I'm going to rotate 180 degrees and same with the red dots. Now, when we label this as a rotation, we need to create our center of rotation, which just would be in the middle of this diagonal line here, I'm gonna call it um, point M. So we would have a reflection, sorry, not a reflection, a rotation around point M 
180 degrees. That would be the transformation that occurred here. Number 12, I have angle ADC congruent to angle ABC, and I have AC bisecting DAB, meaning that these two are congruent, which then by process of elimination, since we already identified that these are congruent triangles, that would mean these two angles are congruent here. Now this one would be a reflection because I just want this angle to map onto this angle. And so how I would get that is I would just like flip it across line AC. If I flipped D along line AC, it would map onto point B. And I flip this C on, along AC, it would map onto this C. So this is a reflection over that diagonal line. And that's it. All right, number 13. Again, it might help to mark your figure. Given E is the midpoint of AB, and E is the midpoint of DC. Um, and then we would know that this angle is congruent to this one. Um, how do we get one of these triangles to map on the other? Well, for this one, point E is a great center of rotation. So if I rotated side AE 180 degrees around point E, it would come out to be this side here, which I want those two sides to match up. So this is a rotation of 180 degrees around point E. All right, moving on to the next page for this next one. It's pretty similar to the one that we just did. I know vertical angles are congruent here. Point B is a good center point where if I rotated uh, angle L or 180 degrees around point B, I would map onto angle J. So this is a rotation around point B, 180 degrees. For the next one here, if I took this triangle, this pink triangle, and I flipped it along segment SH, I would get this triangle exactly. So for this one, this is a reflection along segment SH. Okay. So then for this last one here, um, I have AD and CB parallel. M is the midpoint of DC. We didn't get a chance to talk about this one in the last video, but um, vertical angles are congruent, so I used that. And then looking at your parallel lines cut by this transversal, you could say that these two angles are congruent which would make this angle angle side. Or if you looked at this transversal with the parallel lines, you could say that these two angles are congruent, which would mean these triangles would be congruent by ASA. Either of those would work. Um, we're just trying to identify the transformation. So for this one, angle or yeah, point M would be your center of rotation. And if I rotate D, 180 degrees about point M, I would map onto point C. So this is a rotation around point M, 180 degrees. Now, there may be some times where you actually need to create your line or point. Like for example, in um, this one here, we had to create our point. Sometimes you might need to create a line um, and, and make sure to label that line to show that you're doing a transformation amongst a line. Um, so sometimes you will have to draw that in, so keep that in mind. All right, next it says, what information do you need to show the triangles are congruent by the given theorem? So we have BC 
and DC congruent. We also know vertical angles are congruent. I'm sorry, these don't look extremely um, connected, but we, they are supposed to be connected. All right, so we want to say that these two triangles are congruent by SAS. So I have a side and I have an angle. I want another side. The catch is, is that that angle needs to be in between the two side lengths. So the only side length that would make sense where the angle would then be between the two congruent sides would be side AC and AC congruent. So I would need segment AC congruent to segment EC in order to prove these triangles congruent by SAS. Now my next one, I am given that F, angle FGI and angle HGI are congruent. That's already shown to me. And I'm also given that GI is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. I want to be able to prove that these two triangles are congruent by angle angle side. So I already have one angle on one side. I need another pair of angles. However, it needs to be an angle that does not touch this side here. So the only other pair of angles that does not touch that side are angle F and angle H. So I would need angle F congruent to angle H to show that these triangles are congruent by angle, angle side. All right, that brings us to the end of this lesson.